In this video, we're going to discuss the skin, the skin also known as the integumentary system. Now, the first thing you need to realize is we actually have two varieties of skin. We have what is called thin skin and thick skin. Obviously, on this end of the model, we can see the skin is much thicker, and we will talk about the different layers of the thick skin in just a moment. Now, all skin is made up of an external layer known as the epidermis, and on this model, everything in the purple on out is epidermis. The remainder of the skin is the dermis, and then under the dermis, we have what is called the subdermis, or the hypodermis. Now, on this model, we can actually see three varieties of skin. We can see the skin of the hairy scalp, we can see the skin of the axilla, or the armpit, and then we can see thick skin. Thick skin is found on the palms of the hand and the soles of the feet. Notice thick skin does not have hair. It can have hair, but rarely does it have hair. Also in this model, we will see that there are different glands associated with the skin. In the skin of the scalp, and of the skin of the axilla, the armpit, and the skin of the palms and the soles, we see eccrine sweat glands. On this model, these are the white coiled glands with a simple duct leading to the surface. Eccrine sweat glands make the sweat that we find all over our body. In the axillary area, also in the anogenital area, we see another form of sweat gland known as the apocrine sweat gland. Sweat from apocrine sweat glands is very similar to that from the eccrine sweat gland. However, this sweat has more fatty substances and more proteins involved. This is why if you do not wash the sweat in the axillary area, within a few days, bacteria will begin to live on those proteins and fatty substances, and you will begin to um, exhibit a particular odor. We also can see that the hair goes down into the dermis of this tissue, where we have the root bulb and the, and the hair root follicle. Along with that root follicle, we have a small muscle known as the erector pili muscle. Also associated with the hair, we will see sebaceous glands. Sebaceous glands make oil that is secreted along the shaft of the hair. This is what gives our hair our oily appearance if we don't wash the hair. So we have here skin of the scalp. How can I tell? I see that we do not have any apocrine sweat glands, we have eccrine sweat glands. Clearly we have hair, and we have the thin skin variety. More about that in just a moment. This is skin of the axillary region. The reason I can tell, we have the hair, we have the eccrine sweat glands, but we also have the apocrine sweat glands. This is skin of the palms and the soles, also known as thick skin. I can tell for a couple of different reasons. It is hairless, and when we zoom in on this area, which we will do in just a moment, we'll look at some of the different features of thick skin versus thin skin. Another structure that we can see in this model, they only depict it here in the thick skin, but it does occur in all areas of the skin. Deep in the dermis, right at the area between the dermis and the hypodermis, we have a kind of a lamellated or layered structure known as a Pacinian corpuscle. This Pacinian corpuscle is responsible for detecting pressure that is put on the skin. Notice it is no located deep within the skin, so it would, in fact, take pressure pushing on the skin to activate the different layers to send a nerve impulse from this Pacinian corpuscle. If we look carefully in this small region here of the thick skin, we can also see that if I peel off the epidermis, I see little finger-like projections leading out from the dermis. These are called dermal papilla. Dermal papilla have blood vessels, and they have nerve endings. In this particular case, they show nerve endings with Meissner's corpuscles up inside the dermal papilla. A Meissner's corpuscle is for detecting fine touch. This model does not depict, however, if the nerve comes into the dermal papilla and does not have a specialized nerve ending, it is called a free nerve ending, and those are for sensing pain. I want to take a closer look on this model at the area of the thick skin, although it applies across the entire model. The first thing I want to do is look at just the dermis of the skin. So on this end, 
where we have the thick skin on the model, we've peeled off the layers of the dermis, and all that is left, or the epidermis, all that is left is the dermis. The top roughly 20% of the dermis is known as the papillary layer. The remainder of the dermis is known as the reticular layer. So notice that the eccrine sweat glands, the pexinian corpuscles, and the apocrine sweat glands, and the, the hair follicles and the erector pili muscle are almost all associated with the dermis. And they're asso associated with the reticular layer of the dermis. Blood vessels throughout the reticular layer and reaching up into the papillary layer of the dermis. Now if we focus in on just this area of the thick skin, we can see that the dermis or the epidermis is actually divided into five different layers in thick skin. In thin skin it is four layers, but if we focus carefully, we can see the very bottom layer of the epidermis is known as the stratum basale, the base layer. That is made of different cell types, which you will learn in lecture, and those cell types divide, and the keratinocytes of, those, of that layer give rise to the next layer, which is a lighter shade of purple in this particular model, and those that layer is known as the stratum spinosum. Now as those cells get further and further and further from the stratum basale, they begin to die. And in this model you can see here some small black dots. Those are granules that are forming within those keratinocytes. That layer is called the stratum granulosum. The stratum granulosum. Then we see on this model a yellow line. This yellow line represents what is called the stratum lucidum. The stratum lucidum is only found in thick skin. It is not found in thin skin. So if I compare this thick skin here with the thin skin next to it, I still see the stratum basale, the stratum spinosum, the stratum granulosum. Now I cannot see the stratum lucidum. And then in the thin skin, I have a very thin layer of the stratum corneum. Whereas in the thick skin, I have a very thick layer of stratum corneum. So the five layers of thick skin, stratum basale, stratum spinosum, stratum granulosum, stratum lucidum, and the stratum corneum. Keep in mind in thin skin, the corneum is thinner, and we do not have a stratum lucidum.